Hi, I'm George Cowan. I'm excited to be here with Linda Carroll, and she is a public speaking coach, um, among other talents, but we'll, I'll go into her bio in a bit. And we're going to talk about public speaking and how you can do it in a more intuitive uh, way. Linda, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, George. I'm delighted to be here today. Yeah. So I am going to read your bio uh, so that people can have a sense of, of, of your kind of background and your, um, and your message. And then we'll go into it. So um, throughout, her own life as, uh, throughout her own life journey as a businesswoman and spiritual seeker, Linda has learned that the world craves quieter, more peaceful energy. The world longs for more healing energy, influence, and power. Because of this, Linda has devoted uh, to helping her clients develop their unique peace and power. This includes the peace and power of, uh, of humor and playfulness. Um, her work as a public speaking coach and speech evaluator supports people in their unique expression of the message. And she also does work as a Hawaii healing energy channel and teacher, um, and it helps people to recover, refresh, and cultivate their inner peace and power uh, when, they, when they visit the Big Island of Hawaii. Um, Linda, great to have you here. And also I want to mention that you are going to be part of my Master Heart Business Mentoring Group in 2020. I'm excited about that. So I'm so uh, excited to be yeah, part of that. It's going to be great. This year I say yes. Yes, exactly. So um, let's start with um, public speaking. Why, why do you think uh, a lot of people maybe are, are scared of public speaking or aren't natural with it. Do you want to tell us anything about that? Yes, yes. There's several reasons why public speaking doesn't come natural to people. One thing that people don't really think about is that speaking is a very complex skill. Verbalizing and vocalizing are difficult. It takes a lot of mental processing and a lot of muscle control. We learn to crawl, we learn to walk, we learn to run before we learn to effectively speak. That's because it's easier to learn those bigger muscle skills, but speaking takes a lot of concentration on smaller muscles. It takes breath control. You have to have a lot of control over your mouth and your tongue. So we learn to, to run, to eat, and to move around in our world before we learn how to effectively vocalize. Mm. Yes, yes, I, I, I agree. It's not, a, it's not an easy thing. And um, in terms of speaking in a more intuitive way, in a way that's more unique to one's own expression, any tips on that, any sort of... Uh, perspective on how we can how we can get that well the very the very best and easiest way to speak intuitively and to say what you mean is to practice now I don't mean standing up and practicing giving a speech but I do mean taking the time to perhaps meditate or write or do whatever it is that you do to get in touch with your own feelings and to know what it is that you think and feel. We spend a lot of our time in, our, in today's culture being reactive to messages and things that come in, to images that we see on the media. We tend to have this reaction to things and we tend to blurt things out and just land in the, in the splat of life but we don't always have a lot of depth to what we're saying. So when you, when you process these images, when you process what people are saying, and you go deeper into yourself, and you know how these, these occurrences relate to your own values and your own thoughts, then you can really begin to express and vocalize what it is you really feel. Sometimes the best way to express yourself genuinely is to not say anything until you've really thought it out. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
one of the things that you bring forward, one of the messages you bring forward is this idea of playfulness, right? And so tell us about that. How does playfulness, how might that work into public speaking? And playfulness is something that I have to remind myself about all the time because I get so involved in my work, you know, and, and, and I don't believe that it's work unless I'm working hard. But then you bring so much heaviness and so much burden and so much seriousness into it. But really life is, you know, life is beautiful and expansive and playful the birds, the birds are happy and chirping. The cat will play tricks on you. Life likes to be playful. And when you're playful with it, you end up bringing out parts of yourself that you didn't even know were there. If you've ever, if you've ever said a joke or made a quip that you didn't even know you were thinking and all of a sudden your friends laugh at it and everyone's happy and you just feel all the burdens lift. So playfulness and curiosity and having fun makes everything move faster. It makes you speak more easily. And boy, it sure makes it more enjoyable for the people who are listening to you speak. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so um, when you help people with their public speaking, uh, how, do you, how do you help them? What's like, uh, just give us a, a quick sketch of what that might look like. Yes, it can, it can take many forms because everyone has different speaking strengths mm -hmm. and everyone has different speaking challenges. And of course, a beginning speaker is approaching differently than an advanced speaker who just wants to up their game. The most important quality to evaluating speaking is to listen, to really listen in a simple way. So when I'm evaluating someone for speaking, I usually speak with them a little bit. I hear their voice, the quality of their voice. We'll have a few questions, a little give and take. The most important thing I need to find out about their speaking is what is their goal? Are they making a particular presentation? Do they want to entertain or do they want to persuade? Are they trying to move up in an organization or gain credibility in an industry? Or are they just wanting to be seen as an important team member who has insights that have been overlooked so far? Knowing their goal and then hearing them speak on their subject, I can then bring in all the other factors such as their posture, their stance, where they become louder and where they become softer. Where do they look and gesture appropriately? Where do they maybe look away and wave their arms? Are they putting too much material in? Are they getting muddy and cloudy and losing their focus? Or are they staying on a laser beam so the audience can follow them easily and logically? There's more factors too, but those are the kind of things I will give feedback on. And I will do it in a way where I speak to the speaker's strengths because it's a lot easier to strengthen a muscle you're already using. And I will make suggestions for improvement, maybe things that they could leave out or de-emphasize. And I will end by telling them how to use these strengths and these suggestions for improvement to really focus their beam so their message comes across in the way that they mean it. Mm, that's wonderful, wonderful. And I love that you uh, help people both with the message itself and how focused it is and is it too much, too little, and as well as the delivery of it. And so I bet that there are a lot of people watching this video who might benefit from, from working with you on that. So I hope uh, people will decide to reach out to you. Um, to you know, just, kind of, yes yes and and uh, and yes mostly i am critiquing the delivery and improving the delivery the content everyone has unique content i don't care if it's about colon cleansing or politics or 
how to clean the windshield in your truck. If someone has a message that they want to deliver, I'm here to support that message. Mm, that's wonderful. And um, you have a visualization uh, for us. Is that right? That, that may be supportive here. Yes, yes, I have a visualization. I do guided visualization and meditation instruction also. And I find that guided visualization is very helpful in, in allowing people to craft their more authentic message. Because this visualization takes you inside to your intuition you become very genuine and you may discover things that you didn't know were there, or you may leave behind things that aren't really yours that are just coming in from outside messages. So to get the most from this visualization, let's ask ourselves a few questions first. Questions might be, what will I find when I look inside? What might be a hidden treasure? What might be something I let go of? If there's a hidden treasure here for me, how will it come to me? Will it be as a, in my vision, something where I see the light? Will it be something I hear, something that becomes clear as a bell? Will it touch me? Will it be a gut feeling? And how soon will it come? Maybe it will come during this visualization exercise. Maybe it'll come later in a dream, while you're driving, or just boom, comes right into your mind. And how soon will I be able to apply the gifts that come to me in this visualization? Wonderful. So to begin, think of those questions think, or something that might be personal to you. Maybe even there's something that you're looking for, your lost car keys, something on that, on that order. And at the very least, you're going to have a pleasant and relaxing experience. So let's start out by taking a few deep breaths. Breathing in and out and just becoming conscious of the breath as it comes to you and through you. The breath is the invisible link between your body and your mind. And in your next cycle of breathing, take in your breath in an easy way and then hold it easily for just a moment, whatever feels right to you. Release your breath when it feels right. And start to breathe a little more deeply, a little more slowly, a little more evenly. And then easily, as you grow comfortable in your chair, close your eyes. And begin to realize that you're in a movie theater it's a very comfortable movie theater. You're the only one there. You're completely safe and totally supported there. The chair is comfortable. You feel the ground below your feet. The room is dark but comfortable. The temperature is just right. And slowly on the screen, you begin to see a forest. It's a little forest up on a hill. There's a stone pathway going up there. The pathway winds into the darkness of the forest between the trees. The sky is just the right shade of blue and there's a few little clouds. You realize that as you become quieter, that your senses are becoming more acute you feel the warm breeze on your skin. You hear the faint chirping of birds off in the forest. You see the glimmers of light dancing off the clouds and off the leaves and the trees. And you realize that 
it's through your senses that you perceive light and it's through your senses that you will perceive intuitions. And as you think about this, the colors in the forest grow more glowing and deeper, more saturated. The sounds don't exactly become louder, but they become more melodious and deep. And you move out of your chair and you step up into the movie screen in the forest and you walk up the path. You walk on the stones, your feet are bare. You can feel the sun-baked stones and how good that feels in your feet. When's the last time you felt that way? Oh, don't you love it? You move up into the first trees and you see there's a gate across the pathway. And the gate says, as you enter here, what will you find and what will you leave behind? You push the gate open and you step onto the path and now it's cool. It's hard beaten soil. Oh, and that feels so good too on your warm feet. You move through the trees. You're looking now for clues. You're remembering. You've been to a place like this before. Maybe in your mind, maybe in a story, or maybe just deep inside yourself. The path winds around and you can hear a, a <clears throat> excuse me, you can hear a creek and the water in it chuckling. You can hear the birds. Oh, and there's one, a red bird flying across your path. You see golden shafts of sunlight between the trees. All these things are treasures and all these things have meaning to you. They're symbols of things in your life, in your dreams, in your past, in your present. But in the hurry and the bustle of the days, you've kind of forgotten about them. And now you've walked down the pathway and you come to a clearing. And in the clearing, there's a little stone cottage, an old stone cottage, like one in a fairy tale. It seems familiar. You don't recall having been here before, but somehow it seems so familiar. You can tell no one lives here. It's not derelict, but it is empty. It has a feeling of waiting to it. And then you remember if you walk around on the other side of that cottage, there's a garden there. A garden that, that maybe you played in when you were a child. It's confusing. It is, it isn't, you have, you haven't, but you're eager and you're curious. So you walk around the side of the house, little bunnies, are running in front of you, like they're saying, come here, come here. Remember, the birds are flying, they're chattering, they're so happy you're here, and you walk into the garden, and yes, there it is. It's the garden with flowers and fruit trees and all the things that you expect in a garden. And you can see it was once well-ordered, and now it's a little overgrown, a little forgotten, but it's all still there and it's all still beautiful. You walk into the garden, you can smell the herbs, the lemon balm, the orange thyme, the sharp sage, the sweet basil. And you see the flowers, the sunflowers, the roses, the bluebells, the flowers of your childhood. And you can smell the soil, that rich sunlit sm soil smell. You wanna stay here and play here and be like a child again. But for now, just for now, you're going to find something in this garden. Maybe you'll pick a few leaves, maybe you'll pick a flower. Look around and choose. 
choose for yourself. Maybe you'll pull up a vine and find potatoes. Maybe there's a tomato. Go ahead, look around, take a minute and choose something, a blade of grass, a lemony smelling leaf. It doesn't matter because you can come back here anytime and you can do this again. So pluck your leaf or your fruit, maybe an apple off a tree and put it inside your pocket and say, goodbye garden, I'll be back again. And now you're going to turn and go back around the other side of that cottage, back to the pathway, back through the woods, still feeling so relaxed, feeling the path beneath your feet, seeing the shafts of the sunlight, seeing a deer walk across the path in front of you, and you come back to the gate and walk through. And what have you found? And what have you left behind? Take a few more steps out of the forest and pull out that fruit or that flower or those leaves and take a look. Notice the colors, give it a smell. What does it mean to you? What could it mean to you? What does it symbolize to you? Ask those questions and put it back in your pocket. And you see a really funny thing as you look down the pathway, you see the back of the movie screen that you walked through and you walk back to it and you walk back through it. And now you're back in the theater. You easily sit back down in your chair. You become aware of the room around you. You become aware of your breathing. And as you become aware of these things, you remember that fruit, those leaves, that flower, whatever it is in your pocket. And you realize that you've brought that out with you and that it has a treasure for you. And then when it feels just right, you can go ahead and slowly open your eyes, come back into your day, the surroundings around you in an easy and gentle way. And remember that you have your treasure with you. Thank you so much, Linda. That was wonderful. And I'm glad that this is being recorded because, as you say, we can always come back and visit. So um, I'd like to complete our conversation now and uh, invite people who, are, who have found this interesting, have found Linda's presence interesting, to reach out to her. And uh, your website, Linda, is coachlinda.com. Yeah? I'm sorry. Sorry. AlohaLinda.com, A-L, because Linda lives in Hawaii, so think Aloha, AlohaLinda.com, A-L-O-H-A, Linda, L-I-N-D-A.com. So you can contact her for coaching or evaluation, um, public speaking, and she also does, as you can tell, meditation uh, and healing work as well. So thank you so much, Linda, for the gifts that you provide for us. Thank you, George. Thank you for having me here. And, you know, if you come to Kailua Kona on the big island of Hawaii, let me know, even if we just meet for a cup of coffee, I would love to meet you. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, George. Aloha.